Are you or is someone you know dreadfully unprepared for the apocalypse? If so, then you probably need an SHTF buddy loadout system. And what that is is a loadout for somebody who's not as prepared as you are so they can help you out in whatever situation might arise. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's on my belt, what's on my plate carrier, firearm selection, and everything else related to the SHTF buddy loadout. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're talking about the buddy loadout for SHTF. Do you need additional loadouts for that person who might show up that's not as prepared as you are? This is something you should decide on now and consider it as a possible option because providing someone the ability to give you additional security or to help you on whatever mission it is you might be on could be a huge factor in the ability to succeed or survive. So in my situation, I've decided that putting together a buddy loadout like this one is a good idea. And this one right now is not fitted to me specifically, so I just wanted to mention that. But this could be for your friend, for your spouse, for your uncle, your grandfather, for whoever might not be as prepared as you, but might be an asset during a situation. And we all have friends like that who have prior experience, or maybe they're in law enforcement, but they just don't take preparation as seriously as we do. And if you take preparation very seriously and you're worried about things like SHTF and why you might need a freaking loadout, then hit the subscribe button below because hopefully these conversations help give you more ideas of how to better prepare yourself. We're gonna talk about the plate carrier, we're gonna talk about the belt, we're gonna talk about firearm selection, and I'm gonna give you all of the reasons why I chose the items I chose to try to give you some insight as to what may or may not work for you, okay? So first and foremost, let's talk about firearms, okay? Because that's very important important in the situation where you're arming somebody who's not as prepared as you, not as experienced as you, doesn't have the same capability as you might have, okay? Well, how does that work and what does that seem like, at least in my opinion? So here, for the primary firearm, I chose the kel Sub-2000. And the reason I chose it is for many, honestly, but one of the number one reasons is that it's a pistol caliber carbine. It's easy to shoot, has minimal recoil, easy to put rounds on target, and it's very lightweight because it's not shooting high-powered rifle rounds, and the ammo, 9mm, is available most of the time anyway, and it's easy to train people to shoot with. So I found that this was a good option because also it's very inexpensive. You can usually get a Sub-2000 for around $500 or less. What's nice about that is that you're not investing a ton of money into somebody else's gear or loadout at that point, but you're still getting a quality fire and they'll do the job that you're asking it to do. The other reason I chose the S or Sub 2000 is because it shares the same magazines as a Glock 17, or at least this model does. They also come in other models that share magazines like Glock 19, or you can get different keys that allow for many different magazine configurations. And what's nice is that this loadout also has a Glock 17. So your handgun as and your rifle both use the same magazines as well as the same ammunition. And to try to keep things simple and universal for somebody that's not as experienced as you might be, I found that to be very beneficial. So here we have the Kel-Tec Sub-2000 9mm pistol caliber carbine, right, with a 16-inch barrel, and it also folds in half, which I find to be very cool as well because you can always throw it in a backpack, bring it with you if you ever have to bug out or something like that, and maybe utilize it later down the road for a buddy loadout situation instead of, you know, where you are at home base right now. And obviously the rifle is capable, it does the job of what you want it to do, um, but like I said, it's inexpensive and it's easy to teach on and it's very easy to shoot because of the minimal recoil. So go ahead and show you here that this Keltec Sub 2000 is safe. We've got a magazine right here. Throw that on the ground and we are unloaded. Safety's on. Everything's good to go. Now there's a lot you can do with these as well. There's a huge aftermarket. You can add red dot sights. You can add lights, lasers, all kinds of stuff. Whatever it is you think you'd want to make your Sub 2000 be able to do. But this one's nice and stock just so I can show you guys for demonstration purposes. And then you can add on to it whatever you feel is necessary for your your loadout but I wanted to mention that and this is a nice reliable firearm I've had a very good time shooting it and it hasn't failed me yet so this is the choice like I said one other cool thing about it I can do it on camera because that's when we can't do things usually is that it folds in half and folding in half is pretty cool for many many reasons but one of the main ones is that you can throw it in a backpack and have it with you as a buddy loadout option wherever you go so, lots of reasons why I chose the Keltec Sub 2000 for this application. One of the main ones was budget-friendly price, not investing a lot into somebody else's stuff. That's basically what I'm trying to say anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. And then, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the other firearm here, which is the Glock 17, okay? Glock 17, 
Okay, unloaded, safe, we're good to go. Glock 17, great choice. You really can't go wrong with anything Glock. And we all know that. They're reliable, they're proven, they're easy to utilize, and it's easy to train someone how to shoot. There's no manual safety or anything else you have to worry about. So it's gonna be easy for a newcomer to be able to fire this firearm. It's large enough to absorb a lot of the recoil, so it'll be comfortable. And at the end of the day, it's just a great platform that you don't have to think too much about that doesn't require very much maintenance. So in that sense, you're giving it to somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing or might not have a lot of firearms experience, Glock's a great way to go for that reason, okay? All right, so we talked about firearms because we all like that. We made sure they were safe and all that good stuff that everybody else wants to see for some reason. And you now know why I chose both platforms. Easy to use, inexpensive in many ways, especially when it comes to ammunition, and they share magazines and they also are user-friendly for people who don't really know much about them. That being said, let's move on because we're trying to make this video before hurricane force winds knock the camera over, okay? Plate carrier. So this is an AR500 plate carrier. This is one of their light models. And what's nice about it is that there's nothing too intense. It's very lightweight, it's very minimal, and it's a minimalist carrier for many reasons. But the main reason is also investment wise, it's inexpensive and you wanna use, utilize minimal plates and everything else because you don't know the size of the person that's going to be using this you don't know their physical capability and you don't know if they're going to be able to even handle a full-on fully loaded out plate carrier so what i have here like i said this is an ar500 very light very minimalist design and then it has level 3a plates in it they're not plates they're just inserts and the reason that is is because they are lightweight yes they will stop certain rounds mostly handgun yeah it's not going to do a lot in the sense of stopping rifle rounds but at the same time the whole point of this is to give them the equipment and the gear they need more so than to give them something that weighs too much for them to actually even handle and that's a big part of what you have to decide here is that you're talking about somebody who hasn't had much training or hasn't worn a plate carrier around for a long period of time do you want to give them something that weighs 30 or 40 pounds probably not so stick with something light and hopefully they're not going to need it anyway for the purpose of protection but if they do at least you have the 3a inserts in there to try to give them something all right moving on from there we have the camelback armor bag so the armor bag is specifically designed as a water bladder carrier system for plate carriers it latches right onto the molly webbing it has a three liter bladder insert in it and then obviously it has the mouthpiece right here so that you can stay hydrated while on the run and on the go. So you won't see a canteen or anything like that on this kit because hopefully it'll load them up with water and send them on their way and that's all I gotta worry about. But worst comes to worst, there are other water getting options here, just not a canteen because we're minimizing bulk investment and all those other things, okay? So that's there for hydration purposes. On the front here, this is a Condor MP5 mag carrier system for three magazines. Now this works for the Glock 33 round stick mags as well, which is what is in here. So 33 round Glock mags work in the kel -Tec, they work in the Glock 17, and it carries three of them right here on the front. So you have 99 rounds of nine millimeter ready to rock. And it's extremely lightweight because you know, they're Glock mags and it's nine millimeter. So that's kind of nice. Then you also have a, just a standard universal pouch here for a tourniquet. That way it's easily accessible from either arm depending on what they might need it for. And it's right here on the front so it reminds them that it's accessible and ready to go. And you don't wanna necessarily find a situation where somebody doesn't really know what they're doing with a tourniquet, tries to use one, but it's better to have one and not need it than need it and not have one. So here it is right here. And then there's another universal radio pouch right here with a Baofeng UV5R in it. And that's also so that you can maintain comms and obviously talk to each other, especially if you're on some kind of a perimeter duty or something along those lines where you have to communicate further distances and just being able to yell, hey! Okay, so the other thing on the front of this plate carrier is the K-Bar TDI. Now this is basically a get off me knife. It's your last ditch effort. This is the thing that you're gonna pull out if somebody's right on top of you and you can't reach anything else. So I do find little knives like these to be useful on plate carriers and chest rigs because it's just something extra to have on you that can definitely make the difference, especially in a close combat melee situation. But you also can utilize it for administrative stuff like opening things or whatever else you might wanna use it for that you don't wanna bust out your big fighting knife for. So. K-Bar TDI, a good addition to this, and it's just something else for them to have in case things get a little bit too close and too personal, all right? And that just sits right here behind the tourniquet. And what's nice about the Molly stuff is obviously you can kind of layer everything and stack it as needed and hide away whatever you need to hide away or whatever it is you gotta do. So that's what's on the carrier. That's what I found to be important for a buddy loadout. Like I said, this is not premium stuff. We're not doing ceramic plates. We're not doing a $380 freaking chest rig system. We're just trying to get everybody ready to go for the bare minimum and the basics so they have 
the minimum gear they need to still be functional and efficient in a situation where they might need gear like this, okay? Wanted to put that out there. Let's move on to the belt because the belt is very important as well. So this is a Condor LCS belt. It's a laser cut Molly style belt that's put together with a lot of hook and loop and stuff like that. But I find them to be decent for the price. I think these belts are around 30 bucks. And for something that you know has a plastic buckle instead of a metal buckle, but still does the job and it's not something you're really planning on using a whole lot, not a bad investment. It's definitely worked for me for all my other loadouts and I will have other loadouts coming soon. So make sure you keep an eye out for those, okay? So got the belt. Here I just have a basic hook and loop hook right here that's set up on the belt to carry gloves. So these are just basic mechanics wear gloves. Size is gonna be an issue. You don't know who's gonna necessarily use it. Maybe their hands aren't gonna be the right size or whatever it might be. These ones will fit my wife. So they're here on the belt, but you can obviously buy some different sizes or some universal style gloves just to have something for somebody because gloves can be a big deal when you're dealing with stuff that maybe you haven't dealt with before. So gloves right here. Then the Glock 17 is in the Safari Land 7378 holster, okay? It's got the ALS retention system, something you would have to train somebody on because it's a little bit different. You gotta use your thumb to release a lever, which then you can then pull out the firearm. But the good thing is, is that it also holds the firearm in place. So if that person takes a misstep or falls or something along those lines, they're gonna still have their firearm on their side and it's not gonna be in a ravine somewhere, okay? So just wanted to put that out there. Yes, you will have to walk someone through this whole system, even though it is simple and budget oriented and all those good things, because they're gonna to need to know some of the manual of arms in the sense of what does this button do and how do I get the gun out and why can't I access this magazine the way I want to. Those are all things you're gonna to have to address, but obviously it's better to be able to do that than not have anything at all, okay? So moving on from there, right here we have a Voodoo Tactical double mag pouch. This is for two Glock 17 magazines. So you have reloads for the floor or you have reloads for your Glock 17 or your kel Sub 2000. So either way, you're good to go. And it's nice because, like I said, you can use this magazine for the rifle or the handgun. It's right here on your belt. And if for some reason the plate carrier has to get ditched or whatever happens, they still have a way to defend themselves. They still have additional ammunition and additional magazines for both platforms. So I found that to be very um, valuable, you know? And this is what we're trying to do here. We don't want to give somebody crap necessarily, but we don't necessarily want to spend a million dollars on them either, okay? Over here, we have an administrative pouch. And in here is a bunch of just random stuff and i'll definitely show you guys close-up stuff on the workbench okay so let's take a look at what's in the administrative pouch got that right here all right first and foremost we have a water pouch which is for getting additional water if needed and for water filtration this comes with a sawyer mini and the sawyer mini is right here and if anybody's using any of this gear for any of the stuff we're talking about then they're going to need ways to get more water and treat that water depending on the situation so water filter definitely good to have let's see chapstick good for a lot of applications including lubricating firearms if ever needed be um, a lighter never know when you need to make a fire and that chapstick can be used as an accelerant so there you go we also have a flashlight. Yes, you can put a flashlight on the Sub 2000 or something like that, but they also should have some kind of handheld light as well, just for whatever purpose they might need it for. Obviously, seeing things in the dark is important. This is a through night BSS V4 from Black Scout Survival. If you don't know about his channel, make sure you check him out. He's a lot of content like this that can definitely give you some other ideas about loadouts and stuff like that, okay? But having a flashlight is an important thing for being able to see what you need to see in a dark situation, especially when we're talking about using equipment like this, okay? And then also, let's see I've got a notepad and this is just right in the rain so that it's durable and can deal with the water and then a right in the rain pen as well for the same exact reasons but these are good to have because you never know when notes or something like that might be important maybe they're doing a scouting trip or something like that for you or doing perimeter work and trying to take notes of things that they're noticing or seeing that they want to bring back and report on so that's what's in the administration pouch on the back here we have refuge medical sob pouch now this is like i said the refuge medical sob pouch which is a first aid kit blowout kit that goes right on your back in the small of your back the sob right and that way you have everything you might need in case you were to have a wound of some kind during the use of this kind of equipment okay and it's got everything it's an awesome awesome medical kit put together by refuge medical you can find it over at refugemedical.com or if you go to bearindependent.com you can link to it from there as well and this is put together by bear independence company and all the stuff they put out is awesome and i think it's very viable for first aid purposes in any shtf situation so make sure you have what you need in the sense of a first aid kit because it's very important that you're able to treat what other whatever wounds might happen in the sense of why we're wearing this okay so 
I'll go ahead and give you a list of everything that's in the pack as well as a close-up view so you guys can kind of see why these SOB packs are actually really perfect for wearing on a gun belt setup. So I just want to show you guys the inside of the Refuge Medical SOB first aid kit, okay? This thing is awesome. Obviously, there is a tourniquet here strapped to the bottom, and then the rest of it's inside. And luckily, this is a super easy to utilize pouch because it has a pull handle that pulls the entire kit right out, which is nice in case somebody else has to access it for you or it's for somebody else. Then you can just send this with them and take it right off your belt. Open it up right here with the tab and you can see everything's really well organized inside and ready to deploy if needed. And the contents are all in here. I can definitely show you a few of them, but I don't want to take the whole kit apart just because it's obviously organized and packed so tightly that I want it to kind of stay this way until I ever decide or unfortunately need to use it, okay? But what's inside is a Gen Cat 7 tourniquet like I showed you right here on the bottom. Then you're also gonna get a compact hyphen chest seal, twin pack, you get a quick clock combat gauze, decompression needle, flat duct tape, nasal pharyngeal airway, mini compressed bandage, four inch, gloves and compressed gauze. There's also antiseptic wipes and a permanent marker so you can mark the time on your tourniquet and a lot of other applications obviously come in handy with Sharpies as well. So there's tons of stuff in here that can easily treat whatever types of wounds that we might encounter utilizing kits like this one, okay? And I just don't wanna take it all out because it's so tightly packed in there and knowing myself, it'll never return to that same amazingly organized scenario ever again if I take everything apart. That's just how my life works, okay? But yes, do you have to use your gear and test it out? Of course you do. So at some point, all this is gonna have to come out and be messed with because that's how this works. But I, luckily I have other stuff from Refuge Medical already that a lot of this has redundancy of that I've utilized now and been able to kind of check out and kind of test out to kind of see how it works. So I don't have to necessarily bust into everything that's inside here. But if you were to get a kit like this, make sure you do. So you're very familiar with everything that's inside and that you have a good idea of how these items work. Make sure you go to refugemedical.com or barryindependent.com where you can link over to it and use the code MAGIC to get 10% off. But this stuff is awesome and I'm really, really impressed with their medical gear it has nothing to do with the fact that I like that YouTube channel. It has nothing to do with the fact that they reached out to me to try to do a partnership because we're both people that try to pre preach preparedness. It's everything to do with the fact that this is really high quality and this is really nice gear. And even a lot of their stuff is even made in the USA, which is very important to me as well when we're trying to get away from being under the thumb of those who would like to control us. So there's a lot of things going for you here when it comes to kits like this. And you're not gonna find this on Amazon or just be able to pick it up at a big box store. And that's why I want you guys to be aware of it. So if you have any questions about this stuff, leave in the comments below. But otherwise, I just wanted to share what's in the kit with you, and then we'll move on to the rest of the loadout. Like I said, refugemedical.com, bearindependent.com, you can find those first aid kits there. And if you use the code MAGIC, you'll actually get 10% off on those, okay? So wanted to put that out there, let you guys know about it. And it is a legit piece of equipment, especially for somebody who's not necessarily experienced. They might not be able to use all the equipment within these first aid kits, but they'll have it on them so that if somebody else needs to treat them, or if they want to try to treat themselves, they have the ability to in that moment, which is extremely important because we're talking about somebody who's not as well trained as you might be. And there's a better chance they're probably gonna need medical care at some point than you might just keep that in mind okay and then uh let's see the last thing on the belt is actually the knife now you gotta have a solid knife you can't just rely on the tbi because the tbi is basically for one purpose get off me so right here we have a gerber prodigy it sits right behind the sob first aid kit and the gerber prodigy is a decent knife it's full tang it's ready to go it's made in the usa and it's not that expensive and i believe i picked this one up at walmart but at the end of the day you need a solid full tang defensive knife that's also decent for bushcraft and survival so it's got to be full tang it's got to be at least high carbon you know 1095 steel or something along those lines and you want to be able to do things like batoning wood and you want to be able to use it in the sense of self-defense or something like that if you need to so like i said you know redundancy we have a knife here we have a knife in the back and that's so you can get to it whichever one's easier to get at the time for whatever purpose you might need it for definitely a good knife to have the prodigy is awesome and for the price i mean you know maybe it's not as nice as its older brother the strong arm but it'll get the job done okay so wanted to bring this to your attention buddy loadout can you really go wrong i don't know you tell me Leave it in the comments below what you think about what's on this kit. And like I said, keep in mind, this is not a, this is the best kit you can possibly have for SHTF scenarios. No, this is a, hey, here's an extra kit that I put together for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing as well. I'm not gonna spend a ton of money, but I am gonna have something capable and efficient that makes sense and can be easily explained to somebody with less experience. And that's exactly what I tried to do here. 
So any other input you have or advice, leave it below because this is the kind of stuff I love talking about. Yes, is there a chance we'll never need to use any of this gear? Hopefully so, because this is not the stuff that we want to be running around doing at any point in time if, need, if, not, if not needed, okay? But if it ever comes to that and it ever comes to a point where you do need this stuff, aren't you gonna be glad you have at least one more person in your corner or one more person watching your six and ready to take care of whatever might need to happen? Aren't you glad that that person who showed up last minute that you're willing to let in can now actually perform additional duties that they might not have been able to otherwise. This is something you have to consider now and get ready for now. Wanted to bring it to your attention. Really enjoy this kind of stuff. Hopefully you got some knowledge and some ideas from this conversation. If you have anything else from me at all, magicprepper.com, and that is gonna be it for Magic Prepper.